welcome back connections uh, i hope you are doing good in this 11th part of my tutorial i am going to explain about the theme stations how do we design theme still right so it will be lower theme still today i will also try to cover form still in today's tutorial so let us focus first on the lower theme still as we had explained in previous slides previous, previous tutorials that we make lower trim steel out of d2 material some of the customer they want us to use a2 material that is more better for the trimming trim steels so uh, we always go for wire cut even if it's a profile trim we will go for wire cut even if the uh, trim steel has 3d surface uh, here you can see it's plain right if it has 3D profile, still we will go for a wire cut. And it will be 2 inches thick, uh, 50 millimeter. It will have minimum 2 screws. We prefer either M10 or M12 or half inch. That depends upon the customer standard, but M10 is the minimum size we prefer. It will have Trim steel will always have uh, two double, minimum two uh, screws, right? And minimum one jack screw. As you can see, one of the steel here on the right hand side is big, so we have three. If it will be big enough, then we can also have four, right? And it will have two uh, doubles and one jack screw. So far, in previous slide, previous present uh, tutorials, you have been explained about the function of uh, uh, jack steel, right? So uh, we have fixed these trim steels in the lower subplate, and even though it's pocketed, but still we have given the double holes. Let me show you the sectional view of this trim steel. Okay, now here. So you can see we have a die land or die life. Uh, it's 10 millimeter BP per. Then we have a tapered uh, slug relief. And then we have relief in the sub plate and in a uh, bottom plate for easy fall of the uh, scrap. So uh, die land or die life, uh, you must be knowing the purpose of it. Let me tell you why we use 10 millimeters so that if we if the upper edge gets worn out we will simply grind put some shim below and then we will lift it up right so uh, some of the customer they always want like uh, half inches that is 12.5 millimeter right and uh, we have a tapered slug relief profile here we mostly prefer this one some of the customer they want like uh, a step slug relief uh, right uh, in our opinion uh, that might lead to uh, crack you know after heat treatment uh, the sharp edges they tend uh, they, they causes crack development right so that is that is our uh, trim steel now we are going to talk about form steel so in this die, uh, we are making a, a rib here on the part. So it's a form steel. It's a D2 block. Again, minimum 2 inch thick, right? So it will be minimum 2 inch thick. And it will be uh, bolted using M12 screws. If it's very small, then we can go M10. Otherwise, M12 screws, it will have two uh, jack screws. And it will be located using keys. Right, uh, 20 millimeter or 3 by 4 inches wide keys. Right, uh, the key will have naturally two uh, screws and one jack screw, and uh, that's how we fix it. Right, sometime we also fix it within the pocket if it is pocket minimum, it has to be 15 millimeter deep inside the pocket. Right, 
Now let me show you the section of the uh, cross section of the key area. Why we have to be careful? See, in the lower, which is bottom plate or sub plate, that soft steel, uh, right? That will be like mild steel or C45, you know, uh, boiler plate, uh, um, and uh, the form steel is hardened D2. So we will have like uh, a pocket in the. Uh, sub plate or in the uh, bottom plate right so this will be like 10 millimeter it's a 20 by 20 cross section for this key and 10 millimeter deep it will be in the uh, lower sub plate or bottom plate and bolted and it will two bolts will be there and it will have one now you can see well in the lower one it has a, a surface right on the corner surface so we simply used one e mill uh, 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 a mill uh, to make it a keyway in the upper one which is hardened uh, t2 form steel we have a radii at the corner right okay so let me show you it's a 20 millimeter 20 millimeter wide here the key <coughs> okay so <clears throat> and not only that we also have given some relief right uh, in the upper uh, form steel right. now why we make that radius over there let me show you in a sketch over here if we machine it a sharp edge here and then we harden it then what will happen after hardening it might uh, that sharp edge might lead to crack right uh, let me make a sketch and show it to you okay so yes from if it is not red round that it, if it's a sharp then it will lead some crack so it's not recommended so we always have to make sure that in hard we will have we will have to use ball nose cutter uh, 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 to make a radius at the corners, right? Okay. So that was my form still. And uh, we have some extrusion happening over there. So that's also a form, right? Now the uh, I am going to show you the the trim steel which is having uh, one side cut. So there you can see on your left hand side we have a trim steel just as one side cut. So we have given one wear plate to counter the thrust. In the next station you can see we are having. Uh, flange down right so we are having flange down again it's one sided flange this side and that side so we are getting thrust to counter that again we have given wear plate so these wear plate are mounted on a holder and uh, when my flange still comes it will first come in contact with the wear plate and then it will start flanging down right so it won't flex it will counter the thrust wear plate will counter the thrust you can also see those small small ejector pins around the form so ejector pins are provided in the form form is still to uh, to lift up the part so that it won't get stuck to the lower uh, form steels. Okay, uh, let me also you the construction. Okay, now let me show you the construction of the lifter plates. What is the lifter plate? Uh, we have uh, some lifter plates here in this die. We have some lifter bars and lifter pins. 
so uh, when the ram goes up it lifts up the strip or coil right so that the coil will pro progress forward without getting interrupted or interfered with the form steel or any other lower die element right these are uh, these depends material uh, uh, we prefer like p20 pre hardened steel right if it's very very big then we use like c45 also uh, the lifter plate will have minimum uh, two guide pin minimum three gas springs and minimum two retainers in this uh, this is a big plate so we have given three guide pins on three corners right so the guide pillar will be uh, installed fitted in the uh, lifter plate and guide boost will be in the lower plate right also as we have shown in the very beginning we always uh, clamp we provide clamp for the lifter pin and the lifter boost so the lifter pins are pressed fitted in the uh, lifter plate and also we have used uh, a lifter pin clamp i mean the guide pin clamp right so that way we ensure it won't fall down and we have provided four gas spring here if the gas spring are very small they are just here to lift up the lifter plate they don't do any more work they don't uh, with the stand the pressure or load purpose is only to lift up the lifter plate or lifter bar now uh, it's a big one so we have to give minimum 3 now we have given one more let's say during the operation if uh, any one single gas spring uh, uh, gas drains out leaks out right so then we will have one more to balance it out if we don't give it then that will be a problem right and that's why even if like the next one it's a single flat rectangular uh, lifter bar there also we have given three and we have three uh, retainers <coughs> so these three retainers uh, these are as per this customer standard these are spool retainers i will show you in the let me hide it okay we have one two three you can see we have one two three retainers so these three retainers uh, uh three retainers are fitted inside and uh, before we go into retainer uh, let me also show you the uh, gas spring drainage hole see what happen we use coolant to cool down to provide uh, uh, to cool down the strip and uh, because continuous process it becomes very hot and also it helps in the forming so for the gas spring we have a hole here and if we don't provide any drainage hole then coolant will get accumulated so what we do we provide a drainage hole from we in this case we have given from the back side so whatever coolant get accumulated it will drain out right so any pocket in the lower die any deep pocket in the lower die must always will have drain holes drain holes could be like 4 mm or 6 mm based upon or you can even make it like 8 mm you know so you have to have provide that if you don't provide drainage hole in the lower die pockets coolant will get accumulated okay now uh, let's go back to the retainer Uh, let me uh, let me uh, take a section here so that you can see that how does it work right okay okay let me move the section yes so uh, as per this is customer standard <coughs> we have to use spool bolt so <coughs> we use a, a spool bolt it's not not hard and it's like c45 material it's bolted it has a 
it's bolted from the uh, upper side right and it has like uh, uh, this gap will be like a stroke of the lifter plate plus 5 millimeter right so in this we have provided three and we be able to provide minimum two right in the uh, length like this is the small lengthier narrow lifter plate so there we have two and this one is big so we have three right okay now the other thing uh, we have uh, hill blocks see we have so many stations and it is each station we have different different thrust so to counter the thrust apart from four guide pin we provide a hill block so hill block will be in the upper die in the lower we will have like uh, uh, wear plates so it will be uh, all the three wear plates will be fixed on a, a holder and that holder will be pocketed bolted keyed and in some cases as per customer standard welded also to the lower plates apart from that we have a stroke and sensor so this is the stroke and sensor when the strip progress it will hit this stroke and sensor and that will give a message to the press plc that okay stroke is completed right if it won't then press will stop then we have minimum four stop blocks if this is a big die so we have given like six two in the center as well the stop block we also say it as die setting block it's for the die setter help so what happens we have a group there and the group depth is uh, 50 thaw that is 1.27 millimeter we keep a small lead wire on all four or six uh, uh, groups and then we bring down the ram if it is 1.27 or 50 thaw thick it means that the die is set if it is not let's say it's in instead of 1.27 millimeters to 1.5 so we know it has yet to come 0.23 millimeter more right like that uh, so so as soon as we have same reading 50 thaw 1.27 on all the stop block it means my die is all set the tannage is achieved the die is set and then we start hitting the part and that has to uh, uh, <laughs> For that setting, you have to have a uh, part or strip or coil throughout the station, right? Because when you have the uh, this coil on all the stations, then there will be a thrust upward also, right? So we always check this when we have part on all the station in the layman language when the die is filled, right? okay uh, so that is all for today and uh, thank you for watching this and in the next one next episode episode number 12 we will discuss the gas spring in the lower form stations we plumb the lower form station gas spring right so that is what we are going to discuss in the next one, 12th one. And then from 13th, we will start uh, upper die elements, right? Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.